Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a get ready with me with products that I have flat out forgotten about and that I just don't use very much anymore and I want to use them and talk about them. So I like doing these videos every so often. It really gives me a reminder of what I have and it also let, allows me to use everything as well. So if you have not already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload five days a week, Monday through Friday, and I'd love to have you come join. We are doing a giveaway at 500 subscribers. So subscribe for that and let's go ahead and get started. I was filming a video before this and I took off my makeup and I kind of look a little dark under the eyes and have glitter because I was using glitter. Um, that was yesterday's video. So I will link that down below for you. We are just full of tutorials this week, I tell ya. When I look in my foundation concealer powder drawer, I'm a little like, oh my gosh, like what's, what am I gonna use? Because it can be a little overwhelming. I just think it's gonna be nice to kinda dig in and just see what I have. So, something that really stood out to me, the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Do you guys remember when this was like all the craze? Like, <laughs> this was nuts seriously i this came out when i was working at alta and literally we had it and it just sold out right away and i think that was after um jeffrey's review for sure and i always i never know i never know how much to use um i did a review on this like a year ago um my skin just gets so shiny throughout the day and I wish I had something that just kept me matte all day long. So if you know of something that like a good primer or something, I have the e.l.f. Um, the mattifying version of this and I have not used it yet. I'm curious to see what is going to happen with it. I like to make sure I have a really good layer of it, not just making sure it's really thoroughly on my face, really rubbed in. And all that jazz. Also, if you hear anything in the background, I'm testing out a new microphone. But if you hear anything in the background, that is my dryer. It is so loud. Oh my gosh. I also sometimes like putting primer under my eyes just to prevent concealer creasing and all that stuff. I definitely have glitter all over my eyes. So if you see any glitter, don't mind me. There are a couple foundations in here that I just do not use anymore because they oxidize on my skin. And the first one is the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. This says it's mattifying and it's a second skin effect. This literally made me look so dark and I just like, I don't know, I think that might be going into fails. I also don't really use the Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage Foundation because that oxidized so much on me, but I'm going to use it and I actually like to use a little bit of concealer to lighten it. My favorite um, concealer to use with it is the Jeffree Star one because this is a little light for me under my eyes, but I like lightening it up a bit. And this is the lightest shade too, but this oxidizes like crazy. It looks almost a little dark on me in real life, but yeah, we're just going to kind of use it. And this used to be like my all time favorite foundation and it just is not anymore. It's a shame because this has fantastic coverage. Yeah, I just like to put a little bit of that on with it and I, I feel like in real it, on camera it looks really weird but in real life it really lightens it up I really am interested in getting like a ring light or something maybe that'll like help my lighting situation but yeah like right now it looks like I'm literally putting on a mask but in real life it looks pretty darn even so don't judge. I know it looks crazy right now. What do you fix an oxidizing foundation? I've always been curious about that. Like, you know, what happens if it oxidizes? What do you do? Do you just let it sit? Or is there something in the application process that you can prevent it from doing? I'm so curious about that. But yeah, it looks like I have a literal mask on right now. I just think that maybe... Is there a way, like, I feel like there has to be a way 
that you know spray it they can fix the formula to not let it oxidize is that so i'm very curious but you know like one day i was at work and i'm like oh my god i look orange and then i was like okay i can't use that anymore i'd like to try out some new foundation too but i just know for my skin i can't do a lot of hydrating i can't do a lot of luminous foundations anything like that it just does not work for me i just know for my skin that my skin is either going to break out from them or just not cooperate so a concealer that i avidly forget about is the jeffree star one everybody says this is really good and yeah it's good i like shape tape way better and that's just that's just me but i just think shape tape covers more I have not tried the setting powder and I'd like to get maybe a deeper shade. I have the shade C5 and I think I should have gotten C6 to be completely honest with you. But it, this one has like the rose undertones, but it freaks me out when, you know, it says like, oh, warm undertones because I am so pink and I just, you know, yellow gold jewelry doesn't look too good on me in my opinion. Not a lot of things look good on me. So I really have to stick with like the pink neutral undertones. This one says it's even for cool undertones and this is still too warm for me. So that sucks. But the day I'm filming this, Jeffree Star came out with his Blood Lust. If you guys want me to review that, let me know. I'm a little on the fence about it to be quite honest. But I mean, I don't know. Let me know what you think. A powder that I have avidly forgotten about is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder in the shade Lavender. Now, I feel like this can be quite dangerous because this is super light, um, and, but it also has that purple undertone to it, and that can look really, really bright. So, um, I used to bake with this. I feel like that just wasn't for me. So I am just going to set my under eye powder with it. I'm not putting this all over my face. Just on my under eyes. But. Hmm. Yeah, this is. I'd love to try the more yellow toned neutral one just for all over the face. That would be something interesting. Yeah, this you don't use a lot. You get a ton of product in here. You get almost an ounce of, prop, of powder. Um, another powder I'm going to use for all over the face. This one I have tried under my eyes and it just, it makes my eyes look darker for some reason. So we're not going to do that. But this is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. This came in a BoxyCharm and this is so cool. It literally feels like you're putting like water on your face. So nice and cooling and refreshing and oh my goodness. I'm whipping out my mermaid brush today from Tarte. These I got of like limited edition collections if you see like my unicorn brushes from Tarte or my mermaid brushes. Um, I don't use, I love Tarte brushes. I think whenever they have like a limited edition set, they're really great. I really in particular enjoy their face brushes more than anything. Their eye brushes are great, but I love their face brushes. Like, they have some of my favorite powder brushes. The Unicorn one. They have a great under eye setting powder one. And then like a contour bronzer one, which I think I'm going to use today too. Because I don't use that one enough, in my opinion. This just makes your face feel super cool, super, like, relaxed. But you have to snap this thing all the way closed to keep that... I would say that I forgot about the Pretty Vulgar Bronzed Mannequin Bronzer in the shade Bronzed B. Or is this in the shade Bronze Mannequin? I think it's in the shade Bronze Mannequin. But I got this in a BoxyCharm. I think it was last February's BoxyCharm. Coincidence. But I'm going to go with this other mermaid brush. This is just kind of for, I don't know, this might be a little big for what I want to do. Okay, I'm going to go with the Real Techniques Contour Brush. Just going to put that in. This used to be a, a favorite of mine, but I just, oh shoot, that is too much. We're going to have to blend this out. 
yeah, that's too much. I really fell in love with Butter Bronzer. It's cheaper, it's more readily available, and yeah, but I still use this occasionally. I just, if it's cheaper and it's still great, amazing quality, I'm gonna use it. There we go, we kind of diffused it out just a bit. This brush is also from Tarte, and I just love having like a little bit denser brush just to blend out situations like this. I use it for blush and for bronzer. I never use it to directly put on product, but oh my goodness, this is so good. And it just blends it in a nice manner where it's not like, whoa, look at that contour, but it just still looks, I don't know, it kind of looks weird on camera, but in real life it just kind of was like, oh, there you go. And with blush, I think blending in that blush too will make it look really nice. Taking a little bit bigger brush, this is a BH Cosmetics brush. They have really great brush sets for like $30, $40. I like their face brushes a lot. And I'm just, I'm taking that same pretty vulgar brush and this is a little bit lighter like a little bit less dense than the um, Real Techniques one. But I'm just gonna, I'm also blotting it off in the back of my hand. I think that that is a very important step that many people forget and that I actually forgot when I originally put on the contour part. I like bronzing up my forehead just a bit so I don't look super stark white because <laughs> I'm very fair and there's nothing wrong with me saying that I may look stark white. This is like a dual-ended brush I got from Walmart like years ago. A little bit of nose contour. Don't judge me. I don't want to look like I just have like two lines down my nose. I'm just going to blend that out in my... I look like somebody punched me in the nose. Or I look like I really did not blend out my foundation. Let me know, how do you guys do nose contour? Because this looks horrible. I guess it's gonna have to do, don't judge me. I'm not somebody who avidly does nose contouring. So I do a little bit on the, ch on the um, hollows of my face, but that's about it. If you guys have been with me since I first started my channel, this was one of my favorite blushes. This is the Becca Mineral Blush in Flower Child. Oh my gosh, do you guys remember how obsessed I was with this? I don't even think they sell this anymore. Quote me if I'm wrong, but oh my gosh. I'm just using a Morphe E4. This is a fantastic cheek, um, blush brush. I like to go a little harder with the blush. Usually that before I was like very timid on it, but yeah. And if it gets too much, I take this magic brush. And you do not have to like go searching eBay for this brush. You can use any kind of brush you want to diffuse color like I'm doing. Another blush that I really forgot about, this is the uh, Laura Geller Baked Blush and Brighten in Tropic Hues. This kind of has a little bit more of like a sheen to it. I think I'm gonna take, this is just a BH Cosmetics brush from the Take Me Back to Brazil and I just wanna I don't care if it looks like I have a lot of blush on. I enjoy the look of a lot of, of blush. So, sue me if you don't like it. We're going to highlighter and I'm trying to think what highlighters I just am not using anymore. Ooh, Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors are something that I love, but I'm not using too much anymore. It's a little deep. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use a couple highlighters because this is what I do on a daily basis. And yeah, so I'm gonna use the shade Moonstone. That is a very beautiful shade. I'm just gonna go with the Morphe M501. Why don't I use this more? I have a whole bunch of these. Like, why don't I use them more? They're really pretty. The Rock Highlighter in Daylight. <gasps> Do you remember this? I think they redid the formula, and I think I have the old formula, but... Ooh, I wanna go crazy on the highlighter, cause I can. Ooh, yes. 
That is so pretty. I for, That was like in the way back of my drawer too. Oh my God, I also don't use this much. This is the ABH Dream Palette. I think I'm gonna go with a little bit of, I'm gonna go in the shade Unicorn, which is the pink one. It's almost Valentine's Day, so I can. But this kind of gives you an extra, you know, like extra bit of um, color. It's very chunky, glittery. But I mean, if that's your speed, girl, go for it. And that's what I really like about it is that it gives you a hint of that color without being super over the top. And I mean, this palette is super over the top in general, but I overall really enjoy Honestly Lizzie Beverly Hills Glow Kits. I think that they are wonderful. I love the Aurora and the Moonstone. Those are so good. The Nicole Guerrero one was really good as well. I really wish they didn't discontinue that, but I have it and I love it. I'm gonna go in for brows with the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil in the shade Neutral Brown. This was something that I was really raving about and then just kind of stopped. There's no reason. I really enjoy it. Okay, this thing says poreless for the primer. It's not poreless. Oh, do you guys remember you, when e.l.f. used to be like a dollar? Now their stuff is like $8 and whatnot. I recommended this to my mom and she said that she did not like this because it was too waxy. I don't have an issue with it. But do you guys think that this is too waxy? I'm very curious. This I think is like two or three dollars, but oh my gosh, I remember when I was like 12 or 13, um, I went up to my grandparents' house because our Target, I remember Elf, Target was like the only place you could get Elf. Do you, do you guys feel, feel me? Like this was like 10 years ago. That was the only place you could get e.l.f. And oh my gosh, I remember like my Target did not have it, but my grandma's did. And she took me to Target and I could pick out a couple e.l.f. products. I miss my grandma. I haven't seen her in, in a hot minute, but I miss my grandparents. I really, I really it, like have a really good relationship with my grandparents and yeah, I'm just, I think about them a lot, and I'm very thankful for them. So I am really liking my brows. I'm just, I'm trying to think about a good eyeshadow palette to use. I'm just not sure. What is something that I just forgot about? Okay. So I found four eyeshadow palettes. Not sure if I'm going to use all of them, but I just wanted to point some out that I just haven't used and want to show you the Natasha Denona Mini Lila palette. This is something that I found for like half off at Sephora and was like, ooh, you know, $12.50, I'm going to try it. Um, the ColourPop Mar palette, you know, and the ColourPop Soul palette. This one was a huge favorite of mine at one time and I just put it to the side. Again, I couldn't tell you why, but the Makeup Revolution Emily The Wants. Oh my gosh. This is so cute. $20 at Ulta. I love it. But so I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to start with the Natasha Denona one. Um... And I'm going to this shade just because I like, I love that shade for a good transition. Sue me, I do that a lot, but I really want to dig into either some purple or some blue or probably some shades out of here too. So, ooh. Um, I'm going to go in with this shade, what is this called? Flint. This is the shade Flint. And I'm going with the Morphe M441. My poor eyes. I feel like I just like constantly put makeup on them, constantly take it off, constantly put it back on. And I just, I feel bad and I sympathize for them. But I treat them well with a nice eye cream every night. So <laughs> they can thank me for that. only tried like I have one Natasha Denona palette it's the sunset palette so pretty but I just I can't really see myself spending $129 on a really big Natasha Denona one so 
I feel like that's always been a little difficult for me to do. I don't know. I'm kind of indecisive. I have no idea what this eye look is going to be, but I just, I love doing this stuff where I just pull out stuff that I just have not touched. So I think I'm going to go into the Emily Edit from Makeup Revolution. This is still available at Ulta. I totally recommend this. This is so good. I just feel like not a lot of people talk about it because it's not Jeffree Star and it's not Jaclyn Hill. But Emily was one of the first YouTubers I started watching besides Blair and Elle. I found Emily because I remember being like 13 and being like never heard of Mac before. And I remember thinking, well... All I can afford is Maybelline and, and I just really wanted to use drugstore and she was kind of the one that was all about it. So I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go into the shade Family, which is this like plum color right here, going with a Morphe M330. So just applying this on the outer part of my eye. This has such a big mirror too. And it's 20 bucks. That's crazy. There isn't really a blue in this palette, but that's okay. There doesn't have there doesn't have to be a blue in that palette. But I was thinking about either doing blue or purple. Cause I don't like just doing a neutral look all the time. Because I do that for work. And I feel like when I'm on YouTube. I want to do something a little different. Let me know, do you guys want me to review the Jaclyn Hill round two palette? I know I just did a five looks one palette on her original palette. I'll link that playlist down below. That was a really fun series to do. If you guys want me to do, you know, another, a different look, a different kind of series or something with that palette, let me know. I'm not going to get that brush set though. I just, I have two too many brushes and I want to use what I have so not doing that I'm gonna go back into the Natasha Denona one I just want to add more I crease I feel like I always do this where I just I don't add enough there we go boom boom okay I look really smoky, but I want to do something with a lower lash line. Hmm. Kind of thinking about, I love these teals and whatnot in here. I might just leave these out to play with in general, but I like this purple in the mini Leela palette. And they have some nice purple shimmers to go along with the lid in here. I think that might be the way we're going to go. So I'm going to go take a pencil brush. This is just from Tarte. Use whatever pencil brush you want. You don't have to use what I use. I'm gonna go in this like really nice primrose purple. This is in the shade Poison Berry. And I'm just going to buff that on my lower lash line. I definitely want to use some lighter purples and whatnot, but this is super pretty. I remember I got the Soul and Mar palette at palettes at Ulta on like half off clearance. I think I paid five bucks a palette or something like that. And does do ColourPop still make these? Like I'm curious about it. But mm, I might take some of this teal shade too. We're just gonna go all out. Who cares? There are no rules when it comes to stuff like this. I'm just gonna take a small brush like this. This is from the Vintage Cosmetic Company. I go into the shade. This one is in the shade. What is this? highway right here i feel like if i'm gonna put this in the inner part of my eye but i feel like if ColourPop does not have this palette anymore they have something darn near similar because that's just the kind of company they are you know they're always coming out with something new and i think that is really fun but that can be overwhelming to the consumer i'm gonna zoom you up just a little bit more and i like the kind of look it's giving i like these colors together super cool Oh, God, I shut up my eye. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm just jumping from palette to palette, but I just, I want to use everything. I'm going to go into the shade Belle Violet. That's one of our kids' names. So. I'm just applying that on the lid. Oh, that doesn't really give a lot of shimmer. Let's use it wet. This is a great trick to use, but 
I just, I like it when they look almost wet on the lid. So I like how, you know, I'm using a spray like that can really amplify it. And Emily's actually from Illinois, I think. I think Southern Illinois, if I remember correctly. I remember one time I met her at a meet and greet. I think I was like 16. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. Seriously, I thought that was so cool that I got to meet Emily Noel 83. She truly, I think she really helped me feel inspired and she also isn't like all about drama and all about you know all the other big influencers and there's nothing wrong with that I like other big influencers like I love Jeffrey's products I love Tati's but I think there's something to say about someone so modest who has a million subscribers but is so modest and just humble and I really like that you know she's not going to big events she doesn't live in LA and there's something to really appreciate about that, in my opinion. Well, I dropped my brush here. Then I'm going to go into the cream. I wonder if this would be a good Five Looks One palette video, too. I feel like this is totally mermaid vibes. You can't really tell on camera. But this blue is quite vibrant. I think I want to add something maybe on the inner corner. But I just, I feel like I want something a little more. I may regret this. I'm going to go in with a very small brush. This is the Luxie Small Shader. Going into this shade, which is called Linen, right here. And this, I'm going to try using it dry, but who knows? I might be using it wet as well, but I'm just going to... Oh, that really works well. Apply this on the inner part of my lid up in here and just kind of diffuse it out. Just because I want to give it a little bit of light but I don't want it to take away from the super gorgeous purple purple lavender shade that we already used. So this is probably one of the most in-depth tutorial walkthrough kind of things that I've probably ever done. Let me know if you like this because I feel like not a lot of people do tutorials anymore. I think it's just a lot of um, get ready with me's or first impressions and it just it's not really about like the tutorials anymore so if you like tutorials and want to see more let me know because I feel like this is such like a whimsical fairy tale look I just love the lower lash line I'm so doing that again I think that's so cool so in one of my drawers I have a full basket of mascaras liners and brow products and I'm trying to just think of a liner that I just have, ooh, what if I did purple liner? <gasps> Dude, oh my god, yes. So I'm gonna do the J Cat Rock and Glitz of Diamond Dazzle Liquid Liner in the shade Purple Crystal. I may look super ridiculous, but I don't care. I also have a brow product that I just forgot about. It's the Tarte Busy Gal Brows. This is something that I really, I tried for a video and I just never used again. I just think the brush is too small for my brows, but... Mascara I semi-forgot about was the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. This is very interesting. It's not my favorite mascara. Um, I feel like either Tarte Lights Camera Lashes or something else is better in my opinion. A lip product that I definitely forgot about was the Smashbox Be Legendary Liquid Pigment in Bros Before Rose. An odd name, but this is a very glossy pigment. So you really don't even need a gloss with it. Super shiny, too, and a really nice applicator as well. All right, you guys, this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. My battery's about to die, but don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, give me a thumbs up, and let me know what you want to see next. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.